This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts, and uh, today we are going to uh, spin this uh, beautiful uh, tulip art bat that I uh, posted a video for a few weeks ago. I am going to open this bat up so we can see what we have here. Now this uh, was floofing overnight last night because I had sucked all the air out of it and compressed it down into a gallon Ziploc bag, both of them into the same Ziploc bag. So um, how to spin this? Uh, so there are multiple ways. One would be to just peel off the strips and spin them in consecutive colors. Uh, you know, and then you, the other way, and I, I'm, I'm kind of enamored with this way, is you can get, take this from the corner and just sort of spin it that way. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm going to two-ply this. I don't want to chain-ply it. I want to two-ply it. I want it to stay all light and fluffy. It's really, really soft. What I have decided is I'm going to spin one bat by peeling the strips and doing long color repeats. And I'll do this bat first. Uh, and this one, I am going to spin uh, somewhat willy-nilly. I'm gonna go a little bit from this corner and then um, just sort of like break off chunks as I go through. I think that's gonna look really cool. So I'll have one that's sort of like all the colors of the tools blended and then the other one, when I two-ply it, is going to be these long color repeats, and I think that'll look pretty cool. It should give one of those subtle background stripes to it with all these other colors kind of rioting through without muddling. That's the plan. I'm going to start on the larger whorl of my regular sized whorl, and um, we should be uh, all set here. Uh, I'm going to flip that around. That's just so that divot's there. It doesn't have to be there. Sometimes I spin it upside down and I've never noticed a difference. Okay. And from my bat here, oh, green is my favorite color, so I always really want to start with the green, but this is so pretty. Uh, well, let's just start with this end here and um, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to rip a chunk off like this, and spin from that. And like I said, you could put this, uh, you could just take it from a corner and spin it. Um, you know, there's all different ways that you can spin this uh, and it would be beautiful. Let's see if we like how this goes. So I think I want to make a, well, I would say maybe like an Aaron weight, maybe I'll shoot for here. But what I'm imagining is this super floofy, let's see. I'm trying to decide. So if I want an eight Aaron weight yarn to end with a WPI eight, try to spin around an 18 single if I can. Um, I already started off a little thin. I'm not spinning about a worsted weight. And the other thing is I have to kind of get my draw set to how I like it. My uh, last spin I had my draw a lot higher because I was trying to get a lot more twist. So you can see all this sari going in. That's cool, we want it nice and lumpy like that. I like it. It's gonna give it that nice texture. This is mostly an 18. Uh, there's a little thick spot right here, but the rest of it's all an 18. Let's see if we like this one. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Look at that. Oh, it looks so pretty. Um, let's make this our sample because I like this one. Let's, uh, I'm just gonna pull it off here. I'm just gonna break it here. And we'll tie it and we'll use it as our sample. So going forward, we'll know what we're looking for. 
I did let it untwist a little bit, but it's not too bad. But that looks nice. And I think that that is going to bloom easily to be. So here's the eight right there. Yeah, I think this is going to be a nice uh, Aaron White yarn when it's finished. I'll be joined and we'll be uh, back at it here. So the way that I rejoin when I'm spinning a single is I just sort of floof up the end here so that some of the fiber and I'll let some of that twist come back out. Uh, and then I get to an end that doesn't have twists on it. And I just take the new and I sandwich it over the um, old one like a hot dog. And then I just let that twist come on up in there and you're joined. I'm a, I'm a fan of checking frequently. And that is still 18, except for that little blob right there, which I'm going to lose. my uh, tulips out front, the red and yellow, uh, that kind of blend together and give you that really fancy orange. And they have like the scalloped uh, petals. I, I love them. A little thick here. This looks a little thick to me. Uh, this is great. This is a tiny bit thick. Let's see how it compares to my uh, sample. Yeah, it's a little thicker. So I need to thin this out a bit. I'll let it do it. There we go. And now we're back to matching. I would like to have shorter color repeats. I'm sort of in this giant pink yellow section right now, but that is part of the joy of uh, spinning from an art bat is you can change it and mo you can have the ultimate control over um, what colors and when go on to your bobbin. So at this point, I wasn't really loving the whole yellow uh, purple vibe. I would, I would rather have the yellow and the red blend a little more together. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm going to just flip this over my bat. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, and I'm just gonna go from the corner, this green corner right here. I'm just gonna lay this across my lap like a blanket. And I'll see if I like the way this goes on here. Make sure I keep it out of my uh, wheel though. Don't want it to get tangled. Spinning from the corner like this, it is a little bulkier uh, in your lap. And um, a lot of times people will find that to be unwieldy. In the wintertime, I think it's kind of enjoyable. <laughs> if it was the summertime, I'd be like, no, thank you. Sometimes the sari can be a little bit challenging if it's clumped. I usually try to get it to blend really well to you know do make a smaller um, uh, smoother amount of it just so it's not like a big clump but I had sort of a clump there so let's see what this looks like um, the good news is that when you ply it back on itself 
Look at how amazing that looks. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Let me uh, see if I can show you on here a little better. Uh, wait, let's do this first. Get my little, get a little shorter. see down here isn't that beautiful all those little color pops going in through the green I love it I think what I am going to do is um, do a little bit more of this green from this corner and then I'm gonna flip it over and go from the other corner uh, just because I don't want the big giant color uh, repeats on this bat the other bat I'm gonna strip it and uh, those are going to give me the big color repeats. This one I wanted to be a little more jumbly. Uh, if I have too many big areas of solid color and then I'm plying with the other one, but I'm not really chain plying and I'm not really spinning from the fold, I might get pulling when I knit it where I'll have like big puddles of solid color. I don't want that. So I'm going to do this just for a minute more and then I'm going to uh, flip it around and get some different colors in there even though green is my favorite color and I could very happily just continue to spin an entire bath that looked just like this. So I'm gonna break this here. Even though I don't want to, I love it, it's so pretty. This is gonna give me all kinds of good stuff pretty quick too. If you see the way I'm sort of just kind of moving around now, I just sort of uh, pick it up and pull and, and draw over whatever color I feel like. This is a quick bobbin check-in for the first bobbin single. Looking good. This is the first finished bobbin of a Tulip Bat. The, all the reds and the pinks and the oranges are, are deeper in the bobbin. This is one of those moments where I wish I had a clear end to my bobbin. Some of the uh, 3D printed ones I've seen are kind of open and it looks really cool. For this second single, let me get my tea out of the way so there's no tragedy. Um, for this second single, uh, I am going to do the longer colored repeats. Originally I was thinking I wanted to just peel this off in strips, but I, uh, I'm now thinking, <laughs> I, I change my mind all the time. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just uh, divide this in half so my color repeats won't be quite as long uh, and then um, peel the uh, strips and do it that way. So I'm going to flip it to this side just because it's easier to see the color uh, delineations here. And uh, I'm going to just, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna peel this into strips and then I'm going to take these strips and I'm going to half them that way my color repeats uh, this one is a little thicker on this end than it is on this end so I'm going to go a little less than half for the fat end because this has a lot of fiber in it and this one not so much uh, and then I'm going to uh, make two separate piles and spin these Just straight from the end. Although this uh, pink has gotten in my way here a little bit. Let's try this. We're going for the yellow. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's going to be so pretty. Ah. Uh, peeled this into strips. Uh, technically, this is called pre-drafting. Uh, and um, what I've decided, because 
the first bobbin finished with a more green yellow. I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And when I apply this, so I'm gonna start this one with the green side. So that'll be at the bottom of the bobbin on the inside. And then when I apply, I will be blending um, the, uh, the pink with the green and it'll go through that direction, if that makes sense. You'll see. Um, but uh, so I'm gonna start with the green, which is awesome anyways, cause it's my favorite color. Uh, and uh, whoop, let me flip this chunk of strips over. And uh, I'm just gonna spin this stack and then that stack. So I'll have a little bit shorter color repeats. And this uh, should give me a really nice faded uh, background stripe. And uh, I did like the 14 uh, WPI for my single, and that's what I'm shooting for. And that should give us um, a nice, uh, hopefully, Aaron White yarn. I have my first chunk of green. I'll get this spinning. Uh, I do have to take some of this tension off because uh, as the bobbin gets more full, I have to increase the draw a little bit. So. We will take off what I put on. Let me see if we can dial that 14 single in here. Nah, that's still way too much draw. Okay. There we go. So the goal here is to try to um, maintain that consistent single. Obviously it's not gonna be perfectly consistent because of the um, artsy bits in there. Uh, by nature, the artsy bits like this are going to make it um, have a little more depth to it, which I think makes your knitting and weaving much more interesting and eye-catching. And if you haven't figured out by now, I absolutely love color. The problem is I love color and everything. I need to uh, get like uh, a wardrobe that's all black, white, and gray, and then I could wear all of my crazy things every day. <laughs> see where we are here with this. Ah, oh, well, isn't that just lovely? Oh, I love it. So pretty, it's gonna look really great, blended. I mean, plied. Let's see if we're on that 14, and yes, we are excellent. I'm just gonna continue along here, spinning all the good fun things. This just looks cool. I'm gonna see what it looks like, just cause I wanna see what it looks like plied back on itself, cause it looks really neat. Yeah, look at all that beautiful sorry in there. I love the way the sari looks when you knit with it. I just started, um, and it's going really fast. I just started knitting. I made the a video on how to do the uh, tweed blend on a hackle, and I did royal purple. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was. I, uh, probably uh, maybe a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. And uh, I started the sock. Oh, it looks amazing. I'm going to just have to do like a little, hey, here's some objects I finished with um, the yarns that I spun. So uh, mostly I just do photos of that, but I'll have to do like a little photo montage. I will check back with you in a bit when I get to a different color. So it's not all the same going on to my wheel here. Thought I'd stop and uh, do a little uh, bobbin check. You can see uh, I went down and I'm almost back. So right here is where I started with the green and uh, now I'm up to the pink. I'm on my first pass through my uh, halved color strips. And uh, it's looking really good. So I'm excited to see how this is going to apply together. Little bobbin update. I am uh, finished with the first half of the uh, strips. And I started there with the green. And now this is the start of my second strip and I did the green. And I'm just now transitioning here into the uh, very pale yellow. And, oh, I have to stop moving around, okay. It looks so good. I am really, really excited. I think it looks like tulips and uh, many color tulips. I am 
really hoping I won't lose too much of this beautiful color because I wanted to two ply and not chain ply, but we'll see. Here are my two bobbins ready to ply. This was the first one that uh, I sort of spun willy-nilly from the bat. The uh, second bobbin is the one I peeled in strips and divided each of those color strips in half and repeated through that pattern twice. And I started with the green since I had ended up with green on the first one, hoping to minimize any pulling or large blocks of solid color. We'll see if it worked. It looks like it's going to, but we'll find out soon. Here's the uh, setup, and back here is my Lazy Kate. We are ready to two ply this uh, lovely tulip bag. Some of my leader yarns I actually double and tie in a knot. That's uh, when I chain ply, it makes it easier to start. Um, and I use the same leader yarn over and over and over again. I've never really seen any reason to do it differently. All right, I think we are ready. So I am using, I have uh, four uh, whirls here on my uh, jumbo flyer, and I am on the second smallest one. And again, we're gonna be plying in the S direction. Oh, I think this is gonna look really pretty. And uh, I'm not making a loop. Sometimes you can just double this through, just like fold it through here to start. Um, but when I'm just doing a two ply, I usually just hold it on and it'll just blend in fine. Turn on my auto level winder and away we go. Let's see if we have enough draw cooking here already. And I am going to You want to hold this, and I'm just trying to, um, actually, that's pretty nice. <laughs> I want to get my leader yarn. Uh, let's see if it'll hold or not. Oops. There we go. All right. I was trying to grab my yarn further back so I could split it. I like to split it when it comes from the uh, Lazy Cape because I uh, don't want it to get twisted as I'm pulling back. Ooh, this looks super cute though. And again, I'm imagining a bulkier, kind of floofier yarn. I was uh, trying to get a uh, bulkier weight. We're gonna see what we end up with here. I did 14 singles, which in theory, should give me an Aran weight yarn. Let's just stop a quick sec here and see what our uh, ply back looks like. So I like that. And let's look at our ply angle. And right now, my ply angle is about 25, 20, 25, and I like that. So a little bit looser, softer um, ply is okay with me uh, for this yarn because I want it to be kind of poofy and soft. And then the next thing is when I find a nice smooth section here, see what our, uh, again, here's our ply back, nice. Angle of ply. Now this one got a little steep. I'm gonna let some of that twist, uh, let's dissipate a little bit of that. And the way you do that is you just let it um, you know, frame. All I do is just slide my hand back and let the twist travel up and then take my, my front hand and slide it along. And then you can already see how much softer my um, ply back is here. And my angle is now 30. So I can live with that. I would like it to be, you know, 25 to 30. But I can see that I'm not going to need to put as much. Um, I can either treadle slower or increase my tension. I think I'll just treadle slower. And then I also wanted to check my yarn weight here, my WPI. 
I would like to be somewhere around an eight. Uh, this uh, particular uh, yarn uh, doesn't have an eight, it has a six and a nine. Um, so uh, if I am a little big in the nine, I think I'll be right where I wanna be. And I think I am, that's a little bit thin there, that's probably you know, more like a 12. Um, but that is an eight. That's gonna be an eight. And there still might be some blooming too whenever I uh, set this because this is a, a woolen prep. So the fibers are not aligned and it should be a little loftier and airier. So all in all, I think this is gonna be really cool. And I'm holding my uh, two ply parallel. The plies are parallel to each other. And I'm um, using my forward hand to just sort of smooth back along here. And then I'm pushing the whole unit forward onto my bobbin. Just want to check frequently just to make sure you're maintaining your consistency of your uh, ply angle. You know, um, setting the twist can um, cover a multitude of indiscretions as far as um, overplying. Uh, if you ever have to err, I would err on overplying as opposed to underplying because you you can you can do a lot of magic with a wet set and a good thwack. Um, you know, ideally you want to be able to uh, you know do a a wet set with maybe a light thwack or snapping. Uh, it's it's a very heated topic online, <laughs> and I'm not really like opposed to one or the other. Yeah, it seems to be very divisive online, uh, divisive, divisive. Uh, but uh, it is, um, you know, if you have a nice balanced yarn, I still think it's fine because you can distribute the twist. And, and I thwack many, many yarns. Uh, the other way to do it uh, is to snap it. And snapping is when you have a really nicely balanced yarn and uh, you really don't need to do much to it. I'll snap like finer fibers. So if I'm spinning like silk or cashmere or you know something like that, uh, angora, I, I do not tend to thwack that because it is, you know, it's just really fine. And especially Angora already will bloom crazy. If you thwack it, it's gonna bloom even more. <laughs> uh, you know, it just depends on what you want, what, you, what you're what you looking for in your final yarn. Um, art yarn, uh, in fact, recently uh, someone had just asked me this. Um, I have wet set bobble yarn and I have uh, steamed it. I prefer steaming because uh, when I wet set, and, um, and some people wet set and thwack, uh, and I'm talking bobbles and thick and thin where you have like a thread ply. My experience with, with that is that you get um, the yarn structure, uh, it, it is uh, kind of fragile, especially with bobbles. And if you go thwacking bobbles, your, your bobbles are gonna potentially uncoil a little bit unless you lock in every single bobble, which you can. Um, you know, you can go like forward and back with your thread and it'll lock the end of the bobble. But then you can sometimes see that little, that little thread that's locking the bobble. So I usually don't lock it and I steam my yarn and it's wonderful. Um, so I would not recommend thwacking, uh, the, uh, the, the more, you know, art yarn, at least not the bobbles and the, the uh, thick and thin with the thread ply, uh, you know, Boucle, you could probably thwack, I guess. I can't imagine that too much would go wrong with that. Ooh, look at how pretty this is. Oh, I love it. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's almost perfect. It's amazing what happens when you actually fix your yarn guide. Uh, let's see here. And now that I've fixed it, I'm going to stop it for a minute. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, that's gonna be a beautiful, right on eight. I just wanted to pause and show you this bobbin. Oh my gosh, I love it. It looks so cool. I'm going to continue to ply this. Um, because of my little misfire in the beginning where my uh, guide, I didn't have it in this guide, and this is the uh, worm gear here, so this is what moves it smoothly up and down the bobbin. Uh, so I had a big lump of knot tension stuff there. 
I don't know if it's gonna compress enough to fit all of this onto one bobbin. I might need to make it two, which is sort of a bummer, but uh, that's what I have left over there to do. And I will uh, show you this uh, when it's all set. Hot off the nitty naughty, and uh, it looks really good. Look at this. Heck yeah. Oh, it looks so good. And again, this is the uh, nine, is the uh, second from the bottom here. And let's take a couple of these and see. Right now, this one looks to be about, actually, it looks to be about an 11. And again, so that looks to be about an 11. So these are all looking more like a uh, DK weight, maybe. I'm going to measure this afterwards and uh, see if... Uh, we get any bloom once we're dry. So let's get this set and we'll go from there. It is awesome what a good wet finish and thwacking can do for your yarn. I am so tickled with the way this turned out. It is exactly what I imagined. Here is the finished tulip yarn. It is awesome. <laughs> um, I did not have this one upstairs. This is the one I typically use to determine my final uh, WPI. This one, for some reason, it is like way bigger than, I mean, that is definitely not a six uh, as far as WPI goes. Um, so I usually will use this one and that is a eight. Let me just find some representative samples here. This one kind of shifts a little bit, although, oh, I love this color. So this is an eight, and then there's a thin part here, but not for long, and then this is all an eight. Here's a fat one. Let's see how thick this one is. This might, oh, that's still an eight. Okay, well, I am pretty happy with this. I think that uh, we have successfully, this has floofed up to an eight. Now I need to find the perfect pattern. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this and um, I uh, will see you next time. Until then, spin happy.